today we're going to talk about technologies. I have this uh, short presentation on the internet and the World Wide Web. Uh, we have to make a distinction between what it, the internet is and the World Wide Web. Here we have a definition of the internet is a communication channel that allows easy transfer of information. It is a structure on which the World Wide Web is based. In other words, when we think of what we have to think about, the internet is the is the network structure, meaning hardware and software. Uh, it's a communication channel that, and one of the things that we use the internet for is the World Wide Web. Uh, the second definition is the World Wide Web. The internet provides the underlying structure in terms of computer, in terms of networks, in, ter in terms of protocols, in terms of software, and the web utilizes that structure to offer content, documents, and multimedia. So we can we can uh, communicate and we can render uh, documents, uh, content, it may be, uh, and that's why we say multimedia because the content may be text, may be graphics, may be music. And so we can we can communicate uh, those documents through the internet. Okay? Now the, the internet, and we'll see, we'll talk about that uh, later, uh, you need a, a special uh, pro uh, programming language to render those documents and so users, the end user, us, we can uh, read and listen and watch uh, video, pictures, uh, those documents. Uh, the main technology used or is HTML which is a, a hypertext uh, markup language and XML. Uh, the WWW, the, the World Wide Web, is part of the Internet that uh, is designed to allow easier navigation through the use of, of bibliographic interfaces. The bibliographic interfaces, of course, the graphic user interface, I'm sorry, is how we see the Internet, how we see the World Wide Web, I'm sorry. And hypertext links between different addresses. And so 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 we have to make that distinction between what the internet is and what the world wide web is the world wide web is what actually what we see in our computer screens in our monitors when we are connected to the internet okay here we have a i guess a historical periods of, of the internet and we have the pre-web, that's, uh, we had the internet, but uh, it was pre the World Wide Web. Then we have the web uh, 1.0 uh, uh, that we still have, and it started in 1992. Then we have the 2.0 that it's uh, from, two, oh, uh, from 2004 to the present time, and uh, we're talking about the web 3.0. By the way, I remember uh, I've been involved with personal computers uh, since the very beginning and uh, since the late 1970s. And I started to use the internet in, early, in the early 19, 1980s. And of course, uh, the first computer I had a Apple, uh, Apple II, or up, then I had an Apple II. E and then a C, but the Apple II, you were able to communicate uh, and, uh, and transmit information to the internet with an acoustic modem. And it was mostly email and it was mostly the, it was command base, and that's very important, we have command base here. Uh, so the user interface wasn't as friendly as it is now when we have a graphic uh, user interface. At the time it was uh, command based so you have to learn the commands and it was text based. In other words uh, we used text to communicate with uh, with each other. There were a lot of uh, forums etc etc. Uh, and especially uh, forums and discussion lists or uh, discussion boards, as they were called uh, at the time. Uh, it was, if we compare that uh, period with uh, today, it was ve very, very primitive. Of course, uh, if you s put yourself, uh, you know, 30 years ago, that was amazing. We were really uh, uh, 
uh, amazed of what we could do with the internet and how we could communicate with each other. And we would use the internet, me and my friends, uh, to text each other and to keep uh, chat conversations. But the, the, the user interface was really, really primitive if, if we compare it with what we have today. Uh, then uh, we have uh, the first uh, graphical user interfaces, and that's a, uh, when the web uh, came to be in the 1990s, and everything became uh, easier and became more uh, attractive to use. Because at the beginning with uh, the pre-web era, it, uh, the interface, the user interface was not attractive at all. Later, it became more attractive. You had uh, a graphic user interface. You had hypertext. Uh, you have browsers, and of course, you have um, uh, HTML, which is the uh, programming language for displaying content in the internet uh, that has evolved to other more advanced language languages such as XML. Uh, hypertext was very important because uh, you could link uh, from one uh, page to another page etc and, 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 and that was a, a big change and that came about in the 1990s. The same thing we can say about uh, computer software if we think about personal computers, uh, I remember the first computers using DOS, which means uh, which means uh, this operating system. It was all command driven. Uh, later, now it, it, we have a graphic uh, user interface, and you don't have to uh, you don't have to uh, memorize commands. Uh, now it's much easier to use uh, your operating system in the computer and of course it's it's easier to navigate uh, the, the web World Wide Web. Uh, very young kids and, and older adults can learn how to search for information and how to navigate the internet and this is something that we as uh, librarians or future librarians have to be aware of our competition nowadays is not uh, so much in by other library but it's the competition for for patrons it's what is out there available for every user so we have to be aware of that and what we have to be aware of is now the problem is not that we don't have access to information the problem is there is too much information out there so one of the things that we have to do as librarians is uh, be aware that uh, our role may be changing okay uh, so we we have to learn to evaluate information and uh, and uh, and offer our patrons uh, other services uh, services other than just to uh, get the information because there is a uh, there is a lot of competition out there uh, then we have the web uh, 2.0 and here the idea was that uh, users can also add information and content to the World Wide Web. Okay, it wasn't anymore about consuming information, but also we were able to create information, and we were able to publish information in the internet. And this is where we are now. Uh, we have blogs, uh, we have social media. Uh, like Twitter, Facebook, etc. We may, we may have our own blogs, as I said, and we can publish information that we can share with the whole uh, world. And that's, that's very important. We have wikis, of course. The main example of wiki is Wikipedia. We have YouTube, like the video that you're watching now. Now I can produce my own video uh, uh, and I can uh, publish my own video in the, in the World Wide Web and I can, uh, uh, I can reach a larger audience. 20 years ago, even 10 years ago, or but just to be in the safe, safe side, uh, 20 years ago it wasn't possible. Uh, that was only, you know, uh, it was a dream. Now I can have on my own uh, channel, my video channel through YouTube and broadcast my videos or I can do podcasts or I can have my blog and express my opinions. And this is something that we, we as librarians have to be aware of and we have to use. Uh, by the way, I'm planning a class uh, for probably next winter, uh, the special topics class on social media and the library. 
So that's Web 2.0. Uh, it's not only con uh, we are consumers of information, but we are uh, creators of information and knowledge. And in terms of the library, of course, we have digital libraries, and we have access to uh, millions and millions and millions of pieces of information. Okay, it's not only uh, it's not our uh, OPAC, but we can search if we can search a world OPAC. The world cat is a world OPAC. So uh, let's use our imagination in uh, in terms of how much information we can uh, uh, search and retrieve. In, in 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 seconds and minutes and then the future is what has been called the web 3.0 it's an intelligent web it's a lot of de metadata it's a lot of services uh, that are uh, interacting at the same time so you would be doing a search and you will have a, a graphic and map displays etc 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 of course uh, this is still, uh, I think, it's still in uh, in uh, developing, and uh, but there are people that are talking about uh, Web uh, 4.0 with new uh, uh, capabilities and new functions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so so the the web is uh, developing from the pre-web uh, in the 1960s and and 70s. Uh, then the web, when we have hyperlinks, HTML, uh, XML, uh, and graphic, uh, in, well, XML came later, but HTML, we have hyperlinks, we have a graphical user interface, hypertext, etc. And then we have the web 2.0, when we became, uh, the, the end user became not only, a, uh, not only a user of information, but also became a creator of information. Now uh, we're talking about the web uh, 3.0 and 4.0 that we still don't know how is that going to look like, okay? Uh, to me, it, there is still a mystery uh, in, in terms of what exactly the web 3.0 is, what is the semantic web, etc. Uh, now, of course, in, and we have to think about that when we, th when we think about computers, everything now we're talking about the cloud. So our information is not anymore contained in our computer, but it's an information that is out there in the cloud. Okay, And uh, it, it's very uh, an effective way to uh, uh, share information uh, with with other people, and also uh, we c we don't have to have a uh, computer with uh, large amounts of uh, memories and storage memory because we can storage information in the cloud. Of course, uh, that brings about other concerns, especially in terms of security uh, and uh, uh, identity and privacy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, uh, according to the presentation, these three concepts, or, or the concept of Web uh, 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0, coexist all at the same time. One way to think about that is Web 1.0, people are looking for information through the Internet, uh, such as search engines, a search engine such as Google, of course, and others that have disappeared, and new ones are, are uh, coming up, and we'll see through the... Uh, through the uh, semester. We have an OPAC, the uh, public uh, online uh, catalog, uh, Web 2.0, mainly based on interactive and use, use, using of social networking tools. People can share and collaborate about the user. In other words, as I said before, we are not any more uh, uh, um, uh, passive users of information, but we are collaborating with information and knowledge. And the Web 3.0 is personalized and intelligent web. Some examples would be, would be that you can search history and get suggestions from using current Internet Explorer and Firefox. Of course, um, what, one thing that we have to keep in mind too that all these d development have to do with industry, have to do with marketing, and the, the uh, and new products that are offered to the public. One example, of course, of uh, Web 2.0 
that is fully developed in my opinion this is what we are living now uh, that's where we are now is blog social media and virtual reality uh, many of you I, I don't play but I, I know many people who play for example Second Life and and I exactly don't know what that is. It's like a game uh, that you play, and it's it's a it's a it's a virtual reality. It's a it's a it's it's a reality, but not it's not a physical reality. It's a digital reality, and you are there with your avatar. Uh, that that's an example of Web 2.0. In terms of searching the internet, of course, uh, we use web finding tools. Uh, we may use uh, general web directories uh, where you can find uh, uh, index uh, web pages, and they have a taxonomy, or in other words, they have a uh, uh, they have a they, 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 these uh, 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 these these uh, index uh, web pages may be. Uh, uh, on their menus, or you may have an index, or you may have a table of contents, and um, but however, uh, I think uh, the 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 time of the web directories it's passing by, because what I have seen is that most people now use uh, a search. Now, most uh, users, even librarians, use uh, search engines. That doesn't mean that there are no directories out there, and we will see some examples of very good directories that we still can find in the web. But people uh, are uh, getting used to, or it is easier, I don't know which one is first, to use a search engine and just uh, 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 searching by keywords, for example. The problem, of course, the difference between a web uh, directory and a search engine is that with a web directory, you can be more specific and you may get more relevant uh, hits. While when you use a search engine and you use a keyword, you are going to retrieve many different things. Okay, some things will be, uh, of course, relevant, but there is a there is there is a large number of information that you're going to retrieve to your query that is not relevant for you or for your patrons uh, 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 search uh, so allows you to search everywhere from several billions of web pages allows a search your queries more effectively if you use a advanced search but we don't use advanced search so so this this there are two ways to actually um, uh, search the, the the internet the World Wide Web. One is using search engines, and the other is using web directories. There is a, a, a differentiation here between web directories and specialized directory. But I I like to think that uh, uh, when we're talking about the web, we we can we can uh, see two ways of searching using directories they may be general directories they may be more specialized or more specific directories and we use the search engine uh, as i said just before i think search engine uh, are more popular than web directories of course then we have the internet that is not uh, a public access and it and this uh, uh, or more specialized uh, and some examples of course is uh, library of congress library catalogs opax uh, medline etc etc and we are of course during the semester we're going to explore that and then we have a portal and again i think portals are also something of of the past uh, it's a website that provides a gateway to links and provide links uh, to other resources, etc. But portals were very, very popular two few years ago. I think they are also uh, uh, passing. Of course, this is my opinion. You, you, maybe you may have a different experience, but uh, I'm just uh, relating what I have, obs what I do, and what I have observed others uh, doing. So searching the internet, we have search engines, uh, and then we have directories. Okay, uh, directories may be general directories, or they may be especially the specialized directories, and we have some uh, portals.
but ports as well were very very popular a few years ago now what is the problem with web content okay uh, the problem with web content again is that there is too much information and there is nobody filtering that information and uh, that's when our role becomes key here because we have to learn how to assess and evaluate good information and that's how we can help uh, our patrons when we are doing a reference work and I think that we have to emphasize uh, the role of the librarian or, or the information manager or uh, the information professional uh, whichever name we would like to uh, 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 we like to call ourselves uh, because uh, the problem now is overload of information uh, is information glut is too much information and that's what when libraries uh, become uh, and that's that that's when librarians or in, or the informational profession becomes more relevant in today's digital environment we are living in a digital era and in, in, in an information environment we're full of information we're able to access thousands and thousands of pieces of information through our computer cell phone tablet uh, television etc so our role then or one of our roles uh, for, for now and for the future is being able to evaluate and assess the quality of web content okay these are some ways there are other ways too but we have to see the source uh, and when we mean the source I would say uh, uh, who created the web page or the web content uh, uh, where is that uh, person or persons uh, was their institutional affiliation uh, what is the authority in terms of what degrees what work uh, experience etc etc does that person have uh, then of course uh, the motivation of the per or the purpose of the site the quality of writing and which is very important is the documentation another uh, criteria that we mo we can use is currency how current that information is how up how updated that information is of course when we th and we are going to do a lot of uh, uh, we're going to see a lot of uh, searching this semester on uh, on academic uh, databases we don't have the same problems when we run into academic databases and that and the, and and why is because for in academic databases we have what we call the peer review process okay and the peer review process let me write that down here or let me put it here the peer review process let me okay so let's make a academic uh, databases and we have what is called the peer reviewed uh, process okay so what it means is that your your uh, you create an information you do research you write a paper but before that paper is indexed or publish in uh, first is published in a journal uh, the journal may be a printed journal or maybe an electronic journal maybe an open source open source journal but that information that report that research that you have submitted to this to a journal to an academic journal before it's published will be reviewed by other uh, uh, specialists that uh, will uh, make observations on the paper that you are trying to publish and once uh, you have answered to those observations and have edit uh, your paper if it needs to be edited then finally it will be ready for publication uh, also the peer review process or or what we call in uh, in in scholarly communication infor uh, we call it information dissemination one stage of information dissemination is presenting your your findings your paper in an academic conference and once you present that uh, to the uh, 
to the scientific community. The scientific community there uh, will um, be critical on your findings and will offer you uh, critique, commentaries, observations, etc. And you can uh, update and you can edit and you can make better your paper or you may find that your paper is useless for the uh, scientific community. So in terms of academic databases at least uh, we have uh, the peer review process uh, of, uh, of scholarly communication. One word of warning. That doesn't mean, of course, that uh, everything that is uh, published in an academic journal it's, it's perfect. No, because it's not a perfect world. There are uh, and there are many examples of uh, information, of scholarly information or scientific information that uh, has been found uh, to be uh, untrue on to be or to be unreliable and even though uh, it was found to be unreliable it still was published in a uh, in an academic journal i i don't have uh, now in my mind examples of that but i'm sure you can find in the if you search the world wide web you will find many examples of that how However, with the, uh, thank you to the peer review process, we have at least some degree of reliability. Okay? All right. Thank you.